Hey, good morning and welcome on STBOOF again. We are live and that's the best thing this year that we can meet with our developers and engineers. But you know, guys, I'm also very happy to see you and to talk to you because I'm sure you are interested to see and hear more about our stuff that we are showing here this year. So let's check it out together. You've been working on a lot of stuff the last three years. That's true, that's true. We did not stop. Uh, uh, the situation was not easy. Uh, but our engineers and developers continue to work on the new products and the new technologies. And we are definitely showing some of them over here. I've been looking forward to this moment for a couple of years. <laughs> yeah, me too, me too. You know, last year we did the one over the, uh, the digital platform. But this one is much more, much more better to be here together. And uh, welcome our guests. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, you know, the first thing I would like to show you today is uh, our demo and solution using artificial intelligence for people counting, people detection. And I asked Winsant, my colleague, to show you and explain you a little bit more about it. Vincent? Hi, I'm Vincent from uh, the IIMPU team and uh, at SCM Aquatronics, and I will showcase you uh, in this pod. We showcase. Okay. In this pod, we, we showcase uh, the AI on uh, MPU SCM Sat2 MP1, and we promote our. Uh, we promote our SMX AI package, uh, which is a software package to run on the MP, uh, MP1 to, to demonstrate the people counting. Uh, everything is done on the edge today, and nothing, uh, no private data is uh, no private data is transmitting through the network. And so, uh, with, uh, with this neural network running on the MP1, we are able to detect the person, detect the fit, just transmit the fit coordinate to it, and uh, to display it on a virtual map to display where the, pep, where the people are located today. What's the X Linux AI? X Linux AI is a software package that we delivered, uh, that my team is delivering to propose uh, all the AI framework uh, to run on the MP1, uh, meaning that <laughs> TensorFlowLite is delivered on it. We'll also deliver some, uh, some example and demonstration. So it's optimized Linux for AI? Yeah. Unembedded? Unembedded and uh, on CPU only today. And we also use uh, one, one board from the Sanya system, which, which is a partner from us. And uh, this is called the MPCAM that you can find on the Sanya, uh, Sanya website. And then there's a cool board. Sorry? You can just buy it. Yeah. You can just buy it on the Sanya, uh, Sanya website. Probably. And doing AI on the edge, it's really important to save energy. Energy um, and also privacy. So no sensitive data is going outside the, the board. And uh, going through the through the cloud. Can you, can you also explain the demo a little bit? So, so we see some dots yeah, moving. For, uh, for the demo, uh, you, you can see some some dots moving. So my dot is there. So now we see the yellow dot. Here, and if, if I move outside the area, so this is my dot there. And you can track the people in a, in an environment without uh, pro providing some picture of the person, uh, neither face recognition and so on. Nice. This is cool. Great. Okay, Thanks, uh, perfect. Thanks. Thank you, Insan. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So let's move on and we'll continue on the subject of artificial intelligence, which is definitely one of the leading technologies we are investing into. It's a lot about the hardware, but many things around the software. So let's check what do we have here over I see we are quite busy, but that's good. Uh, so maybe we'll start on this side. Okay. Maybe you can start talking. Yeah, always customers here. Yeah, so yeah. maybe let me introduce uh, Here we are showing the Nano Edge AI Studio. And maybe you guys are already aware that we have won the award in the category of software this year and embedded award with this Nano Edge AI Studio. So, yeah, Basel, could you tell us and show us how this Nano Edge AI Studio could help our customers and engineers to develop and bring artificial intelligence into their project? Yep. Uh, so here we have a, a project using a time-of-flight sensor, and we are doing gesture recognition with, uh, with this uh, sensor. And going le it can detect if you're going left, uh, going up to switch the blocks, uh, and going on the, on the right. So you can do this and classify many different uh, many different things with uh, thanks to Nano Edge AI Studio and uh, with uh, Nano Edge AI Studio, uh, we're just uh, 
the idea. We're just uh, the next day, um, work was functional. We're just uh, trying so many different things now because uh, before we had the uh, vibration uh, use cases, uh, current use cases, and now um, the time of flight gives you uh, give us uh, many different um, applications and many different things to, to try. Yeah. Can you show us the demo how it works? Yeah. So going left. Then you can go right, up, like this. And you go up and uh, turn the box uh, and rotate the box. So there's a lot of uh, applications for time of flight. Uh, yeah, it is. Have, uh, it is. But you know, the story here is we are using time of flight as the source of the of the data for the for the analysis. Uh, but you could have a different uh, source of data. You could have a MEMS or vibration sensors uh, as well uh, for all the predicting maintenance. But the real, the real beauty of Nano AI Studio is that you don't need to invest hours and hours and uh, you don't need to have a data scientist to collect thousands of data, clean them, classify them and build your neural network model. What the Nano AI Studio really does is from the basic set of data that you can collect directly from the application, it will select from thousands of different pre-trained models that has its, 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 its own database, the best one fitting the application, then propose it to flash it inside the microcontroller and make the real training on the micro, on the edge again. So the, the whole process and the time to implement uh, such a solution in your application gets much more shorter with low investment. And, okay, so let's move on. Uh, as you see, uh, so Basel explained the demo with uh, time of flight. Here we have uh, the solution also with Nano Edge AI Studio uh, showing some uh, predictive maintenance with sensors. And I would love to introduce you. Uh, oh, okay. uh -huh. I would love to introduce you to Pierre, which is uh, one of the fathers uh, of the solution. So, yeah, Pierre, if you can say a few words about Nano Edge AI. Absolutely. So, should I uh, look at the, the demo? Should we have a look at the demo? So the, this is Nano AI Studio. So this is a software solution by ST that is um, targeted for embedded developers. And it's uh, for developers who would like to develop a solution including smart features like AI, machine learning, but without specific knowledge in machine learning. So the idea is that you use signal examples coming right from your sensor, raw signal examples, and then you use them to find the best possible uh, AI library that is um, specific, the, the best specific solution for your application. And uh, what is exciting about this solution is that it enables uh, embedded learning. So um, you, you can learn uh, patterns and recognize them directly from within the microcontroller, which is something very unique on the market. So uh, here we're doing uh, anomaly detection using uh, um, current monitoring. Here we're doing uh, anomaly detection using vibration sensing. So it can be used with any sensor. It's compatible with all STM32 boards. Um, and it's, uh, it's also compatible with the ISPU um, board, which is a MEMS sensor. So in those types of applications, we've, we're in the edge. We're running embedded AI in the microcontroller. Uh, but here we're pushing it even further by embedding ML uh, learning capabilities directly in the sensor itself. So you know that every time you're getting closer to the data, it cuts the costs. So it's a huge breakthrough in the industry. Nice. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you. Pierre. Thank you. We can continue with uh, with our customers. Absolutely. Uh, yes. Have a good show. Go. Cool. Thank you. Okay. So let's move on, guys. Uh, Maybe the last little thing uh, we also here show on AI is similar to what you have seen with our MPU solution with the, the X Linux AI package. But here we are running uh, also people detection and people counting, not on the microprocessor, but not on the microcontroller. And I let Guillaume to maybe say a few words about the demo and the best advantages of this one. So here we have... Uh We have two example applications that we can run through our tool called the uh, STM32 Cube AI, which allows you to convert pre-trained neural networks into optimized C code for the uh, STM32 microcontrollers. 
Uh, so the beauty here is that you would typically see those kinds of application on MPU or a doorbell. And um, it will detect the faces and then for each face you can compare it against a, a database of enrolled people. So right now I am not recognized but if I go in front of the camera I can enroll my face and now I'm recognized as user 2. Anybody else who will go in front of the camera will not be known by the the system. QBI is a software component that can be added to the Kubernetes. Oh, the microphone there. Yeah. And it could, uh, you can use pre-trained model from TensorFlow, Keras, or uh, PyTorch through ONNX, and then generate the code and integrate it into your application. Right. So uh, computer vision uh, is a very exciting field to specialize in, right? Many people excited yes, about Yes, and uh, this is the beauty. Typically, you would require uh, MPU, and now we can start to see some applications running on microcontrollers with very uh, low memory and uh, small uh, How's the device. performance? The performance, uh, is, we're starting to see some uh, decent numbers. So right now at 4 FPS, a few years ago we were running only at 1 FPS. So every every year we're making some progress. Is somebody making some magic in the background to make it faster? We have a very dedicated team that is uh, optimizing our Cube AI library to uh, take advantage of the DSP instructions and the uh, dual issue uh, pipeline of the Cortex M7 uh, microcontrollers. And there's even more stuff that could be optimized. For sure. Always. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Guillaume. So, let's move on. And with this, we will stop the, the part that uh, we have dedicated to artificial intelligence. But of course, the next one, important one, is connectivity because the whole world is becoming connected. And one of the two new solutions uh, we are showing on our booth this year are linked to a connectivity to a cloud. So the easy way and secure way to bring your data to a cloud if you need. One of them is uh, AWS. And I will ask my colleague uh, Ram Kumar. Right. So yes, this is Chabax, and if you could say a few words about our solution with AWS and how the U5 is helping to make uh, this connection reliable and secure. Uh -huh. Yeah, and here we have... Uh, 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 here we have AWS IoT uh, running on the stm 3 U5. Uh, the STM32 U5 is specifically chosen for the security, built-in security inside the device because it has got secure AES, it has got uh, best-in-class uh, security with uh, with the hardware unique key and uh, this is very much important for uh, the secure uh, solutions that need to have the key stored on the device, on the MCU itself. And on this board, what we have here, uh, we also have STSafe. Uh, if you want to go for uh, uh, common criteria, EL5 solutions, uh, uh, you know, you have uh, STSafe on this board. That is tied to STM32U5. And on this uh, board, uh, now it is uh, qualified and running on the AWS IoT core. Uh, so we have that running. As you see here, uh, this is a demonstration what we have here, running AWS IoT Core, and this is a cold chain demo. The idea here is to carry all the vaccine vials at the lowest temperature, and, uh, and also if there is a fall detection, you can identify it, and you can identify if you have a GPS connected to this through any serial interfaces or whatever, you can identify where the location is. And all of this is actually done in the application done by Amazon here. And here you're seeing the temperature alarms, which is already indicating that it is a high temperature. And here you're seeing the humidity and temperature in the screen here. And we can also show uh, we can also show a GPS screen on this one. That is the idea. And this is running Amplify app database on top of the on the on top of the STM32 U5 running uh, AWS IoT Core. And, and we have pretty much over there when we also have uh, 
the entire Defender application also running. We can do that. So this is a nutshell. Uh, U5 STM32 U5 is the best in class device from ST to show showcase our uh, low power technology and highly secure inside uh, for AWS IoT customers. When you combine uh, perfect cloud features with perfect hardware, it's like the next level magic happens, right? Yes. There's so much new new ideas and innovation happening in this field. That's true. That's, you know, the, the, the need of security is, is increasing year by year. And like uh, Ram Kumar said, uh, the U5 is today best in class because we have it's the only microcontroller today on the market which has PSA level 3 and CESIC level 3 hardware certification on the hardware chip. So really we bring the, the another level of security to the hardware on the device. Okay. And this has been a very highly requested feature to have all the security on the, on the IoT. On the IoT you need to have a secure boot and a secure firmware upgrade solution. And this is implemented by ST and we have that. And this is uh, aligned with the TFM and it runs in the secure and the non-secure zones and it's, it's, a, it's a very good solution for uh, a cloud-connected, low-power microcontroller from ST running Cortex M33 core. Mm -hmm. So AWS is just getting more and more busy in the IoT. Oh, AWS solutions. is very popular uh, in the cloud arena. They have uh, system solutions across the industrial uh, consumer or many applications or even wearable applications. All the consumer applications needing to connect to the cloud, they have uh, a full ecosystem support on the AD, AWS IoT Core, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Ankumar. Thank you. So, talking about U5, let's, uh, let's check after the security as well the low power features. Because as we said, IoT very, very often, these are battery operated applications, energy efficiency is a big topic as well. So what we try to make sure is the U5 is as well very power efficient. My colleague is right now making a pitch to the customer, so let's not interrupt him, we can we come back and let's move on to the RF field. In my opinion, so on this part of our booth, we try to concentrate product and solutions for RF technology. So we speak uh, BLE, FRED, Zigbee, the newly introduced matter, or the subject solutions. But let's first speak with Vit. Uh, Vit is our RF expert, uh, leading a, a group of engineers, providing uh, solutions and support to our customers, implementing uh, RF associates of, uh, of ST. So I let Vit to say a few words about what do we have new, and what kind of cool demos we are showing over there. Yeah, thank you, Roman. So, hello, everyone. So, we have our great STM32WB. So it's not new, but it's still new for a lot of people, so that ST is also producing a radio microcontrollers. So it's a dual core, dual radio device. And uh, what we are showing here, what we brought here, that we also uh, extended our capabilities of the stack. Yeah. So is this a mesh? Yeah, yeah uh, this is not the mesh. This is just demonstrating our multi-link capabilities, but I see there is some issue with the demo. <laughs> There's a demo. <laughs> okay. It always happens. Sometimes. Okay. Always happens, but what we are demonstrating here, the last two days, <laughs> uh, was that we are capable to maintain a connection with eight phones at the same moment. So this is the uh, slave on the BLE, and the phones are the masters, and we can transmit the data from the... Uh, from the slave to the masters at the same moment, okay? So that was here, but what we are also demonstrating are some extra features we implemented on the stack level. So we implemented the extended advertising here. Uh, so uh, we can uh, now transfer a lot of data just use it by using the advertising uh, so that the device doesn't need to get connected to the master, okay, so the link doesn't need to be established, and we can really uh, have a device like this, so this is demonstrating like a tracker, so it's just uh, sensing temperature, it's just sensing the location, and is uh, putting the data in the internal memory, and then we, when we uh, get close to the scanner, okay, uh, I will take another one because yeah, it was already scanned, so when I take a unit, okay, it downloaded all the data uh, before the link, just through the advertising, and uh, we also then transfer the data to the tablet. And what is quite nice, small detail about this demo that we are using here, and 
Bluetooth web API uh, framework, which is very cool. Okay, so for every single engineer outside, <laughs> out there, okay, if you want to implement a very simple user interface uh, uh, for your testing development or even for the end application, please look for the Bluetooth web API if you did not hear about it so far, because it's a uh, JavaScript, Node.js based framework. You can use uh, the Google Chrome web browser okay, to access the Bluetooth adapter and you can implement an application that will operate with the Bluetooth uh, from the web browser. So it's very cool. Uh, what is BLE Multilink? Is it part of the standard? Are you no, doing no, something no. special? So for the Multilink, it means that the device can maintain more than one link. Okay? So that it can be connected to more nodes at the same moment. So it can be a master, a master link or a slave link. So it can be connected either to one or two uh, smartphones at the same moment. And at the same moment, on top, it can be a master for multiple slaves. So it can really operate multiple communications. So it can create like a scatternet network, which, is, which was uh, there before the mesh technologies. Okay. So if you, have a, if you want to create like a small network of sensors or products which should communicate one to each other, you do not need necessarily to switch to the mesh network technology. You can still use even the standard Bluetooth flow energy and the standard stack with our device capable to do the multi-link communication. Bluetooth web API is so cool. Is it uh, something that's just part of the spec, something you add to the something? It's not coming from ST, okay, we are doing promotion of a technology or a, 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 a solution that is not coming from ST, but it's not yet publicly known to the people so that it exists. It's on a GitHub, so everyone can uh, use it, okay, it's open source. And, and every Bluetooth device has a little web screen? No, no. Okay. And you will be capable to... Uh, so just do with JavaScript stuff. It's like that you do not need to open Android Studio and implement an Android application, or you do not need to, let's say, learn some uh, other programming language. You can just use uh, JavaScript and very simple application that will run in the web browser and will be uh, operating with the Bluetooth. So, <laughs> it's a very, very good question, okay? So 20, 20 bytes payload for the standard advertising, or 27 if we consider the overall data frame. But here, uh, we can put there even the extended data frame. So it's uh, 250 frame, 51, okay, overall. So that's the maximum number. I hope I'm not wrong, yeah, I'm not a good uh, to remember numbers. So, yeah, yeah, so there's an absolute payload, yeah, so there's absolute payload, because we are combining different channels, okay, so we are using external data frames, and we can combine to use multiple packets to send the overall data payload, yeah. So it's a fun field to work in the Bluetooth low energy? It's very, very fun. Very dynamic, very, very changing easy, technology. Yeah. <laughs> okay, perfect. Let's move on then. Thank you, Witt. Thanks for all this. So, yeah, this was just an example. Of course, we do also show here the, the, the latest, uh, let's say, arriving uh, protocol matter, uh, where we have a first solution and we are preparing it to bring it on the market in the coming uh, weeks, let's say. But yeah, you can see the first demo already over here. Now let's go back to the U5. Sorry, guys. But I see now the booth is available, because that is very nice. An interesting uh, feature of the U5. So, Yes, let me welcome to Manuel. Hello, nice to meet you. Hi. So Manuel, please tell us something about uh, the U5. Yes. With the focus on the low power. What yeah. is so unique inside this microcontroller to make it so special for the low power consumption? Yeah, so it's, there are two main reasons, so two main uh, important features. One is uh, security, but here we are focusing on ultra low power. So uh, on this uh, microcontroller, uh, U5, uh, we have a dedicated uh, state machine which is working independently from uh, the core. So the core is uh, off or let's say in stop two and the peripherals can work uh, autonomously because the, the CPU is not fetching any instruction. We have a dedicated uh, DMA instances which is a low power DMA which is fetching the instructions instead of the CPU. Uh, so you have a subset of peripherals that uh, you can use while the core is in uh, stop mode. So uh, this modality is called low power background autonomous mode and right now is a special feature for STM42U5.
I can show you what are the peripherals that you can use and some use cases. You can use communication peripherals like I2C, SPY, UART. In fact, this is what we are demonstrating here and we will show you later. Uh, we are demonstrating an I2C reading from an accelerometer. And in addition, you have a dedicated 12-bit ADC for this low-power domain, which is called the smart run domain, that you can use to store your data. Uh, the data are stored uh, in a dedicated SRAM, and down to stop two, you have 16 k bytes of SRAM available. And uh, you can decide to wake up then the core uh, on the strategy you prefer, transfer complete, art transfer complete, or when you reach a certain threshold, for example. Uh, and other peripherals which are available are uh, DAC for digital to analog converter, low power timer. You can also create uh, control loops because you have also some analog peripherals which are available, comparators, op amps, uh, and you have dedicated low power SIO which are available and very interesting, for example, for implementing your own data transmission protocol. Um, in general, what you can do is chaining a different peripheral to achieve uh, uh, your task and uh, uh, keeping the MCU in low power and achieving uh, ultra low power consumption. So with this solution, you can cut your power consumption by a factor 10. Um, uh, Are you talking about 16K? 16 Ks of RAM down to stop two, so it means that when you uh, initialize, uh, you build your function, uh, your LPBAM application, you have to be sure that the variables and the handlers that you use in your application are stored in these 16 K bytes. Uh, when the memory is full, you can then wake up your core, uh, do some computation, and then come back to your task. For example, that's a smart strategy. Yes. What are you doing there? Yes. This is a. Uh, uh, a very smart strategy. Another interesting fact is that, uh, uh, for example, when you're doing an analog conversion, you can also decide to wake up on, uh, on a threshold. So when you have a certain value, you can decide to wake up the call. Uh, Somebody's the, asking, uh, yeah. 128K SRAM would be better. What would you say to that person? Yeah, so um, you can definitely use more RAM if you go to higher power states. Uh, we have to say that for the solution, for the implementation we have seen so far and customers using LPVAM, 60K is pretty okay because you can always wake up for a while doing your operation with 160 megahertz and then come back to stop two and uh, go on with your, uh, with your low, ultra low power tax. So, uh, maybe I can give you a short overview of the demo we are presenting here. So, uh, we are reading an accelerometer via I2C3, we have a dedicated I2C3 instance, which is I2C3 uh, free, um, and uh, the acquisition from the sensor is triggered by a low power timer, um, and the same timer is also triggering uh, another timer, which is a low power timer free, which is generating a completely independent task with modulated PWM. Um, in so, we basically have two DMAs channel doing two uh, different tasks. One is uh, configuring and reading data from the sensor. Here we are reading two times six bytes from the sensor. And we have another DMA channel which is taking care of generating uh, uh, variable PWM in circular mode. And uh, to do so, we use our U585 disco board, which has accelerometer and gyroscope on it, and also some uh, nice connectivity, like Wi-Fi and building, and our uh, power shield, uh, that is based on L4 with our Q and we have I2C uh, signals. If I stop the acquisition, you will see that uh, the uh, sampling time is around one millisecond. And on the third channel, we have the modulated PWM. Then we have the other three channels which are used for debugging purposes to see um, what's going on in the smart run domain. In fact, this is a very clever way to debug low power application. When these three signals, which are CD stop, sysleep, and SRD stop, uh, are high, it means we are in stop two. And when this signal is toggling, it means uh, we have DMA transfer happening. Now we measure the consumption with our uh, X nuclear LPMA01 and our cube monitor power. I will show you. So we are now measuring the consumption. The application is running with cube monitor power. One very interesting feature is that you can select your uh, time window and you can have a calculation of the average power 
and uh, the average current uh, that is used. So in this case, with low power background autonomous mode and one millisecond power timer, uh, we are in the range of 61 microamps. Uh, we have built an application which is using instead another, uh, which is using what we call legacy mode. So we are. We have built a benchmark application which is not using LP BAM. So you have to imagine that the uh, the core has to wake up when the transfer is happening, and uh, uh, you keep on switching between stop to and run to do this transfer. So we can also demonstrate in this case that if I flash, for example, the example that uh, it's using uh, this legacy mode. Okay, I will show you. We can observe two things, okay, from this logic analyzer. First, what is happening on this free channel is a bit different from what we saw before. These lines are toggling. It means I'm waking up very frequently, okay, which is not very good for power consumption. In fact, if I measure the power consumption with this legacy application, uh, you will see that the values are around 180 microamps versus 60 microamps. So we are gaining a factor free uh, of, uh, of power with uh, this uh, uh, low power background autonomous mode. So we can generalize the result saying that uh, with STM42U5 and low power background autonomous mode, you can achieve great benefit in terms of power saving up to a factor 10. In this case, we demonstrate also that the gain you have is increasing uh, as we increase the sampling frequency of the I2C interface and this result is valid for I2C, UART and SPI, so for all communication interfaces that we have on STM42U5. If you want to discover more, I, le I leave you with some uh, reference links from our uh, application notes which are mainly related to low power and to one of our, our latest on-demand webinar which is in fact showing how to build this application from scratch. Thank you very much. Thanks to you, Manuel. Very great pitch. Thank you. Thanks. Do we have any questions? Uh, sounds like the STM32U5 is a beast. Yes, yes. It's really, you know, it's uh, our latest product based on the 40 nanometer technology. So very progressive. Uh, and latest one and really the combination of performance security and low power enable this to create at many of our customers well, let's say the dreaming applications okay so let's leave a little bit the the part of the booth where we speak about microcontrollers and microprocessors and the different solutions around and move so to, to see some of our other products And in the live chat, please, uh, please come with some cool questions. To help okay. Make it cool. All right. Let's go. Okay. So we move to the second half of our booth. Uh, so after the microcontrollers, microprocessors, let's uh, check what do we have for let's say the sensors and other products. And I'm here with Zuzka. So Zuzka, could you tell us something about this great sensor, which you have seen a little bit already when talking about the Nano Edge AI Studio, but here you see the hardware in action. So good morning, everyone. Here we are showcasing our new sensor. It is called ISM330IS, and it offers accelerometer and gyroscopes. But besides that, it also includes a so-called ISPU, an intelligent sensor processing unit. This means this is a uh, small but compact risk core capable of data processing with much less power consumption than the MCU. So here on this booth we are showcasing two demos. Specifically we have here one demo is showcasing how we can run sensor fusion on uh, directly in the sensor. So this means we calculate the orientation in the sensor and then the PLE system on chip only collects the data and transfers it directly to the smartphone app. Then we have here also another demo, which is a combination of TMOS sensor and the ISPU. So it is a simulation of the front door and the ISPU here is uh, specifically here to detect the state of the door. This means that if I open the door, then we can see it detected by a red, uh, red blinking LED. So I think this is it for the introduction.
Um, does ST have a long history during DSPs? DSPs, yeah, we do, because uh, <laughs> basically uh, since the processing power is, is needed uh, for different types of applications, even in the microcontrollers today we try to include dedicated accelerators uh, to help with the calculations or fill filters, uh, uh, let's say the sinus, cosinus uh, coordinations, so yes, we do. Okay. And uh, there keeps coming new generations of this. Sensor. Things even better all the time. Yes, absolutely. So we, we, we listen, first of all, we listen to our customers and uh, like this example of ISPU where we really integrate dedicated core to run the machine learning already on the sensor is already a big step through. Because in past, normally you had a sensor, you had a micro, you had a connection, PCV was bigger, more expensive. Now you can do these simple things on the one single device. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Zuzka. See you later. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, after some of the sensors, uh, we do have as well here part dedicated to automotive solutions. And let's come back a little bit to the AI, but in the automotive world, which is a bit different from industrial. And I'm here together with Alessandro and Max, and they will show us a few words about AI in automotive, the solution from SD. So guys, the stage is yours. Yes, thank you. So thank you very much and welcome. Uh, we are very pleased to present you this new solution for AI at the edge in the automotive market. And we are able to put a complete neural network inside a normal microcontroller, so no specific IC. But Can you come close to the microphone? But yeah, with a, a very standard microcontroller, this is uh, our Chorus 4 Mag, but uh, we can also use our Chorus 1 Mag. So we are able to embed an LSTM neural network which is able to analyze the status of the car while driving, analyzing status like bumpy roads or normal drive or parking or anything else. And obviously this can serve as a base to build other neural network applications or on the edge without having to use any other power inside the car. What do we see here? What we see here is just a simple system which is analyzing data coming from a sensor. We're using one of our accelerometer six axis this data coming into the microcontroller is uh, analyzed in time series of six seconds, and every six seconds a response has been, has been produced. So, that's it. So, uh, uh, road state monitoring is just one of the many automotive segments you're in? Road state monitoring is uh, one of the new trends because obviously we, we all want to increase safety uh, for the driver. So, for one side, we want to increase the safety by monitoring the streets, but also by monitoring the status of health of the driver. So this data collection that uh, here is uh, simply done with uh, an accelerometer can be expanded with uh, several types of sensors and combined together to give a better picture of uh, the status of health of uh, the, the driver. So this is for sure a trend in the automotive today. Nice. Thank you guys. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. So yeah, let's, uh, let's move on to Let's say to the last part of our booth, uh, and here we'll uh, see some solution around our NFC, so near field communication, uh, around ST25 products. And I will be very happy to, to say and spend some time here with, with my colleague, uh, which can explain you why he has here so nice boxes and the car and the solution. So please, sir. Uh, sure, yeah. So what you can see here, uh, here. what you can see here is a typical use case for one of our NFC uh, applications. So NFC reader plus stack. Inside this small car, we have an NFC reader with an NFC reader antenna in the front. And in each of those blocks, uh, we have so-called NFC tags. And what you can see here, if we start the tool or the, the toy, it starts driving and it detects automatically which kind of tag is inside. And inside, the tag tells basically the reader what it should do, and it drives accordingly. So the reason for this tool, or the, the purpose is to teach small children uh, how to, to program first logical steps of programming, basically. So NFC uh, gives like a natural interaction Exactly, technology. exactly. So with NFC, you can communicate over several centimeters. There are a lot of use cases, not only for dedicated NFC readers, but also communication with smartphones. So there's a lot of user experience, added value, 
and uh, that use experience. And it does the charging. Uh, charging is also a use case of NFC, which is quite new actually. So we have here a proof of concept for NFC charging. The big benefit is we have tiny antenna sizes. So we are talking about uh, sizes on receiver side of 9 by 9 millimeter as example, can also be smaller and a power level of up to one watt. Um, targeting applications like smart glasses, smart rings, hearing aids and similar applications. So it's different than the Qi? Yes, it's, it's targeting uh, smaller applications than Qi, um, as said, with, a low, with low power requirements and smaller sizes. And it's just available now on um, ST platform? Yes, so we have a web page for that, so sd.com slash nfc minus charging. You can check out our webinar and learn how you can implement NFC charging solutions. So here in, in your corner, it's possible to enable thousands of new games and ideas. Yes, and that's that's products. the plan. That's the plan. So really want to to enable uh, customers to bring new use cases in into gaming for for toys and also for other applications and markets. So uh, without revealing any secrets, I'm sure you will hear about very cool product uh, projects that use this kind of technology. People doing new cool things with it. Yeah. So. Uh, Lately, there are a lot of different applications, uh, board games, remote cars, similar applications like that, exactly. All right, it's very cool. Nice, and there's more NFC at the booth, or what do you want to talk about? So uh, let's let's check this one, because this is very interesting too. So, you see we are all the time very busy, okay, so we, we can come back. Yeah, yeah, you can come back. You want to show everything or not ah, everything? No, 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 no. Okay, I really selected a few things, but uh, maybe yeah. Patrick, I see he's available. Uh, Patrick? You want to, Patrick, Patrick? You want to say something? No. Okay, so let's go. Let's use the time before uh, we have this uh, interesting demo pod available. On this part of the booth, uh, we don't show any products, but we show the STM32 Cube ecosystem. So you know, today developing with the microcontroller, microprocessor, you want to start first selecting the right component for your application, then you want to start to integrate quickly the low-level drivers so to make the configuration of the, of the peripheries. And this is what we do with our tool STM32 Cubemix. So, code generation, exactly. So in the development flow, of a software select of a software let's say development first you do the configuration of the basic peripheries the cubemix will configure a project and generate for you the basic project on which you can start to build your own application then of course how and where to build the application and the debugging for that we have a list of several cube and ir and kyle ides so you as a customer can select between the advantage of STM32 Cube ID is that it is free of charge, supporting all the STM32s in one shot. It has also some new features for free Artos uh, debug awareness, and we are also adding now the Azure Artos, so the FedEx uh, debug awareness, which is very important when you are working with a data operating system to understand which task is running, which one is suspended. So it helps a lot in the debugging of your system. So if we go from cube generation to cube, uh, sorry, code generation to code development and debugging. And, excuse me, guys. And as developing an application, at some point, maybe you want to monitor what's happening in your software. And for that, we have a STM with the cube monitor. So it's part of the cube ecosystem. And that one is based on the Node-RED technology. And with this one, you can, you can create uh, really a flowchart, graphs, buttons to control in an intrusive way uh, your software, read uh, variables, read content of registers to, to show them in a graphical and nice way. And all this, the great benefit is it is fully free of charge, available, and always up to date with our latest products. So that's uh, about the ecosystem. Maybe one little last thing. Just before Embedded World, we have released STM32 MCU Developer Zone. So what it is, maybe you are wondering, basically with this STU MCU Developer Zone, what we try to, to do is to bring into one single entry point all the information about the products, software, middleware, tools, partners, 
that you may need to know when starting to work with STM32. So it's like entry point in intersection, you can continue your information and data research to be able to develop with STM32. It's a <coughs> very big task to be community manager with developers. <coughs> of course, the community itself is a uh, is very important part today of, uh, of the support and development flow. On ST side, we, we do have extensive community, we try to moderate and answer ourselves or within the community to all the questions from our developers and users. Let's see if uh, our colleague is available. I, I got one question here in the chat, just in case uh, if that's okay. Uh, please ask ST on their plans to include dedicated AI accelerators in the MCU. Yes, uh, indeed. So maybe you missed the beginning of, of our shooting, but yeah, at the time we, we were really looking after our solutions for artificial intelligence. So uh, in terms of hardware accelerators, uh, today we don't have any dedicated one, but be sure on our portfolio we do have uh, STM32 with dedicated accelerators for doing the artificial intelligence uh, neural net for computation. So more and more stuff is happening in that field. Definitely. We don't sleep, we, we go on, we carry on. So stay tuned for new products. I'm sure we will be able to introduce you more in the coming weeks and months. How uh, do people get involved? Do become developers? Find a company that's hired them? Uh, get to be an expert? You have everything for everything and that, that stuff, right? But I wouldn't become uh, absolutely true if I would say I, we have everything. There is always something missing and something we can add more. But yeah, to start with STM32, today you find a lot of tools, samples, libraries, free of charge on our web. You find a lot of training materials. Uh, we have uh, plenty of YouTube uh, educational programs. Uh, uh, the one I could recommend is STM32 learning page on our st.com. You find a lot of links to YouTube, so-called MOOC uh, sessions, where we start from the basics of what is microcontroller, how to select the right one, how to run the first code generation, how to start debugging, monitoring your application. Uh, we have dedicated uh, videos and training programs on security, so how to implement the secure boot, how to implement uh, uh, graphics, HMIs and GUIs. So really, I'm quite confident to say today we have a lot of things available for you so if someone wants to start developing you should be able to find a lot but at the end um, in the same time uh, true that um, we still have a lot of things to do and yeah give us your feedback uh, let us know your needs and we will be very grateful for those and try to bring new things products solutions trainings materials for you and even more discovery boards, more little boards to play with, right? Definitely. So, uh, yes, you may remember that in past we were always uh, supporting the community and developers with boards. We do it again this year, but in not such a big scale because of the current market situation. All right. And uh, you said there was some big, we can film right yes. there, right? Yes, yeah, it's now available, so let's go. So, yes. And this would be the end of our shooting in terms of demo pods. And now Rene is available. So Rene, please, could you say a little bit more about uh, your demo and your product that we are showing here? So actually, we are showing NFC for consumer goods in general, also for access control or payment. But the main demo here is... Right here. Just but the main demo here is a new standard uh, by the WPC. It's called Key Kitchen, and what we are showing here is the upgrade of a standard induction cooktop uh, with NFC to enable appliances, kitchen appliances, to go cordless by just placing them on the induction hub. There's an NFC communication for the power demand. If I turn on, the power is requested via NFC and transferred on the standard induction technology. It's uh, also very versatile in terms of placement. You can rotate it. It's very safe because there's no port. What if it gets a little bit wet around or something? Uh, it doesn't matter actually because uh, there are no cables, nothing, no electricity, no contacts. 
it's pretty safe and even on a water kettle for example um, of course it takes a while now to cook up but basically so you just add NFC to standard induction exactly so That's there's an NFC reader in the induction plate a receiver in the appliance uh, those two are communicating for the power demand and in the end the requested power is delivered via the induction hub and you can already see that the water is starting to boil in here uh, the kettle is getting hot but actually below everything is staying cool as usual and the nice really thing is cool. uh, warm <laughs> it depends warm. But not on, dangerous. Not dangerous. Stable. On, stable on the on and the mixer. full power. Full power. 2.2 kilowatt power delivery. Same like if you had a cable. Exactly. But just without the cable. The nice thing is that this is a, a dual function hub, so it means you can use it for cooking. You can do your scrambled egg, whatever you want. But you can also put a cordless appliance on top, and the power is delivered wirelessly. And the key kitchen standard is also working uh, to make hidden transmitters. If you, for example, have a dining table, you can place it hidden below the table. And if you have a family come together and you put a cook on top of it, you, need, uh, you don't need to plug it in. You can just drop it on the table and it's working immediately and totally safe. Nice. So NFC is really changing the world. Exactly. When you use it the correct way. Yeah, we are upgrading actually existing applications with benefit for the end user, making it more convenient, uh, more safe. And especially if you um, think about the smaller kitchens, um, with the cable you always have a hassle where to put it. You can drop over the cable. In this case, you just drop it into the kitchen. Uh, table and it's done. So uh, very convenient actually. All right. And it's an exciting future of smart homes. People will have this built in. And uh, it exactly. used to be a common standard, right? It's actually a standard, as I said. Um, it's discussed in the WPC, the same group which are doing the Qi charging for mobile phones. And there's a dedicated group to it, uh, the um, Key Kitchen where uh, this standard is discussed, hopefully um, released very soon and um, we will see uh, for sure first appliances as well uh, in the near future. That'll be a fun gift Yeah. before this Christmas. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure. Let's okay, see. But basically I would get something of those for my kitchen for sure. Nice. Cool. <laughs> All right. So. We are at the end, really. Thanks for watching, thanks for your questions. Shabak, are there any last questions? It was a little bit emotional, like, uh, as you see, as you show on the big screens, long time mm. has passed, and it's Correct. great to reconnect. Absolutely, you know, all the ST team was really looking forward to, to be here again, to meet our customers in face, to see the emotions, to, to have a discussions, chats all together, because I'm sure all of us, appreciate the remote way of working, Teams, Zoom and so on, but at some point we, we become a tired of it and we need to come and meet together. So yes, we are definitely happy we are here and we are looking for the next editions to come see you and bring you another improvements and new solutions from ST. I just got one question, it's asking can it run Doom? Doom. Okay. Um, I think so, <laughs> why not? <laughs> I think there are no limits. Huh? <laughs> Cool, thanks a lot. Okay, thank you guys. Ciao.